Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, then welcome. I am so glad that you decided to join me. Today is a cloudy, dreary day. It's a Sunday. I need a project to do and I love DIY projects. So I have been searching for the perfect project for this particular kind of day. And all the parts just arrived. So I'm really excited today and what we're going to do. But some new things here is I have re recently joined Patreon. Patreon is where I'm going to share my super secret notes. These are my private notes that I take as basically my cheat sheets on how to redo everything. And it's really nice to have something printed out in front of you, a little notebook for when something goes wrong. So if you're interested in seeing my notes or having private conversations with me and we try to hash out problems, please join me over there on Patreon. Just check out Amy Astro or look down in the, in the description below and you'll see a link there. So I'd love to see you guys over there. But enough of that. You want to know what we're building today? We are building, you ready for it? A dew heater controller. Yes, I said it. We are doing a dew heater controller and this whole thing cost me maybe $10 to do. Can't beat that. So let's get started. So let me show you a few components that we're going to be using. The first one is a PWM module. This is actually a dimmer switch. It's for the RGB LED lights. Um, it's real nice. It comes in a slick little packaging. You can wire here, wire here. But what we're going to do is we're going to modify this case. As I've seen on a gentleman over there on Astro Photography Tutorials, I'll leave a link up above for his YouTube channel if you want to check out how he does it. And um, I'm going to pretty much follow what he did because it works. And I'm pretty sure I can do this, which is a bonus. What does PWM stand for? It's pulse width modulation. But you know, we really don't care about getting all that technical. It's a dimmer switch and it's set up for RGB channels, which is perfect. This means I can control three dew heaters with this. All right, so I can do one for my camera, my guide scope, and my reducer, or anything I really need. But it's really slick, and we're gonna dissect this box and do some wiring. So let's look at the parts that we're gonna be using. This is a PWM. It's also known as a dimmer switch for RGB channels and LEDs. And it has these nice little ports on the outside. And we got side here for our power. And this case will come apart. We'll dissect it with these four screws here and we'll do some wiring on the inside. We've also got ourselves a nice little soldering iron here that will warm it up and get to using it. And we have these female RCA jacks. They split up. And you've got a piece here that you can wire to and you'll sandwich the wall of the um, the dimmer switch also between it and for power I'm going to use my power works and that's where how I'm going to feed power to this box let's say you prefer to stick with the end of a, a cigarette lighter you can just pick one of these up Walmart Amazon wherever you want Cut off this female side, expose the wires, and we'll wire it together. Or we also have this 2.5 millimeter plug that I picked up a while back that has that has these flying leads to it that I could wire up if I wanted this type of connector. So there's plenty of options. Use your creativity on how you want to wire these up. And I've got my crimping tools, my wire strippers, and yeah, there's not that many items to this project. I'm going to use four pieces of wire here. I've got them in assorted colors. 
red, blue, green, and white. And let's see. Oh, we need to have a, a drill because we're going to be drilling some holes in the side of this case. So that's all the parts and pieces. Let's get to building. So let's go ahead and start with removing the screws on the back of this. All right, so now that I've got the screws out, we're gonna crack it open and we see the back of our circuit board. If I pull this down, you can see where our little rheostats are that would turn the RGB just fine for us. And yeah, this box actually has a lot of space in it. So I'm gonna drill myself three holes on the inside of here and I am going to mount this female RCA plug right through here, okay? And I'm gonna situate it so that the curved side of the plug is facing up. So let's go ahead and drill three holes into this box. All right, so I'm gonna mark where I'm gonna put my three holes. Put one right here, right here and right there, okay? And I have my drill bit selected already. It is a quarter inch drill. And let's hope this works and doesn't crack. All right, you see I've got three nice little holes there. I'm gonna take my RCA jack and push it through the hole, nice. And you see, each RCA jack comes with a nut. This will go on the inside of the box. And it comes with locking washer. And then finally, this little, uh, like a pancake paddle thing here, is what we're gonna wire up to. So now that I have these three holes drilled, what I need to think about are the holes on this side. I need four small holes for the wires to come out and wire into these terminals. I'm just going to use a really small drill bit and place four holes in there. There we go. Four holes, not straight. To be expected from me. All right, now that we've got all of our wires assembled, let's go ahead and install them. We're going to do the red. Let's see, I'm going to put the locking washer on. And a little nut, if I can pick it up. All right, so I have all of these wires attached to the RCA jack here. And they are gonna be coming through these holes over here and I'm gonna wire them up to these terminals. But now that I have the grounds on all of these attached, what I need to do is bring power to them. So I need a jumper between each one of these RCA jacks. So I'm gonna take this white piece of wire and I'm gonna create a jumper that goes between each one of these terminals. Okay, so to make my jumper, I stripped one end of the wire so I could hook it into this last one. And I'm just gonna use, I marked where each one was and I'm just gonna melt this little insulation jacketing off to expose the wires, I will tin the wires, and then I will attach them back here. All right, so now you can see that I have the hot jumper to each one of these, and I have the grounds wired red, green, and blue. And now I'm gonna bring them all through the case right here. But I wanna line them up, let me show you. So on each one of these, there is a letter and it's R, G, B, and then this V plus. Okay, so the red goes to the red, the blue goes to the blue, the green goes to the green, and the white goes to V plus. So let's thread them through these holes and get it all done. All right, as you can see, I have everything wired up. I have my power going to each one of these um, RCA jacks. And I've got the ground wiring underneath 
and coming out to through the holes. And now when I assemble this, I'm just gonna flip over like that. Now I should be able to, if I did this correctly, wire these straight down to the appropriate terminal. And I'm going to cut these off probably just a little bit. I'm gonna cut these off probably just a little bit long and then I'm gonna feed them into each terminal and screw, to, screw them down tight. All right, let's think about our power cord here. I'm gonna use an Anderson power cord. I think I want about this much, about 18 inches worth. I'm gonna cut it just like that. And I have installed the gland that's supposed to keep water from getting in here. But this will also remove any strain we have on the power cable. So now I'm going to strip off these wires. I'm going to drill two holes over here so they could come out and wire. So they can come out and wire to these terminals here. But I'm going to need a little bit bigger hole than I needed last time. All right, so here we go. It's all assembled. I've got the cable gland with my power cable coming out and my power is wired over here to these two terminals. Here's my RCA jack so I could do three channels on the dew heater and here is how each one of these switches are getting controlled and all that's left for me to do now is to put my Anderson power pole on here and power it up and see if this joker works. Now remember, you can choose any power source that you want. You could get the traditional cigarette lighter. You get that from like Walmart and you cut off the female end and split the leads and wire it through. Or you can get a, a 2.5 millimeter jack if you want and they come with flying leads off of them from Amazon. This one's a little bit short so you may want to wire your own, but that can certainly get you power. But most of my stuff is done with Anderson power poles, so that's what I'm going to do. And let's get started wiring it up. And what I have here are some of the 15 amp power poles come in a kit. I buy them directly from PowerWorks. You can also find them on Amazon. They're the same price. They're usually from the same company. And it's just a matter of how they apply shipping. So on Amazon, it'll be a little bit more expensive, but there's no shipping. And on their website, they're less expensive, but there is shipping. So you're just gonna have to play with that game. And um, I haven't yet to find one that was less expensive. All right, so now that I've got my two wires and notice that the ends are scooping down, and that way they'll fit over the end of this uh, metal cap. And I should be able to just to push them in. There we go. They're both on there. All right, guys, so here's the moment of truth. I'm going to turn on my PowerWorks power supply. And I am going to plug this guy in. And we got power. But I'll admit to you guys, this is the second time that I have plugged this in. And you notice I had reversed my red and black. Yep, that was a goof, but an easy fix. No big deal. So let's plug in a dew heater and let's see how it does. Let's put it on the red channel and I'm gonna turn this up. And let's see if it gets warm. There it goes. It's getting warm. Excellent. Real good, real good. So, we did it. All right, guys. So, I just made my first dew heater controller. I'm really excited about this. It's a nice little small profile. I can label it up when I decide where I'm going to put everything at. Um, it works. I made one goof where I had crossed up my power. Um, in hindsight, I should have drilled all my holes first 
and uh, let's see. I've got a cable gland here. It goes, the power goes inside and then out up here to be wired. And this is to keep any cable strain going. It's not a perfect fit. It's a little bit big for this particular cable. So I'm gonna put a drop of silicone in there just to seal this box up and me not have to worry about moisture. And I completed it with my favorite Anderson power pole. And it works. I checked all three do channels. Um, I could turn them up to whatever I wanted. Now, I don't know what temperature I'm turning them up to. This is gonna be trial and error where I go full power or half power or something like that. It's just something fun to play with. But you know what? I did it myself and I'm really proud of myself. So you guys, if you like these type of videos, these DIY projects, consider subscribing. Hit the alert bell below so you know when I upload new Astro related material. Don't forget, you can also follow me over there on Patreon. There's a link below. I do ask for a very small amount, but that's me trying to keep everything going. My, uh, my expenses are way greater than what I earn, so I'm just looking to get a little bit of balance in my life so I can keep making cool projects like this for you guys, okay? But on Patreon, I'm going to give you guys my super secret notes. These are notes that I take when I'm out in the field, when I have a problem and I troubleshoot it, and I take notes so I don't have to go back again when it happens again and refigure everything out. So I thought these notes would be very helpful to you. But currently out there right now, I have the full Picks and Sight workbook tutorial, which matches the videos that I issued out a few weeks ago. So if you wanna play along with me and edit that image with me, I've uploaded all those images out there on Dropbox for you to have, along with a printed out workbook that corresponds with the video. So it's everything you need to get started, figure out how to do your first astro photography image. So how cool is that, guys? So think about it. Join me over there on Patreon. I would appreciate it. I'm also helping folks one-on-one -on -one as best that I can. Um, right now, there's not a whole lot of you guys over there, so you definitely have my undivided attention. Well, guys, that's what I've got for you guys this week. If you have any comments, ideas for the next video, please leave them down below or shoot me an email over there on my website, which is amyoastro.com. See, there's lots of ways for you guys to get hold of me, and I do respond to, I'm going to say, 99% of them. Why? Because there's going to be that one that just slips through and I didn't see it. I'm sorry. It happens. I'm human. But guys, that's what I got for you. So I'm wishing everybody some great health, clear skies, and I will see you all in the next video. I love all y'all. Goodbye.